Hello and welcome to Quilt Addicts Anonymous. Today I'm gonna to teach you how to machine quilt on your own home sewing machine doing free motion quilting and we're gonna use full line stencil in order to do that. And the reason why I recommend you start with these stencils is you are then able to kind of have a guide because if someone tells you stipples are super easy, all you do is go around and you have gentle curves and you don't overlap your lines that's easy to somebody who's been doing it for a while. It's very challenging to somebody who has never quilted a curve before or who, or who doesn't know how to get out of a corner very easily. So what these do is they will allow you to mark your quilt top very easily and get that muscle memory down. And that muscle memory is key in order to be able to quilt either on your own home sewing machine or on your long arm. I quilted on my own home sewing machine first and then went to the long arm. And I found that even though the motion is different, when you're on your home sewing machine, you're moving your fabric. When you're moving your long arm, it's still doing the same thing. So for me, the muscle memory transferred very well. I know that's not the same for everyone, but this will give you a good starting point. So to get started, what I recommend you do is you get some of the fabric that you regret buying. Um, and this one I'm using black so that way you guys can see it really well on camera when I put the chalk on. And then you need some pounce. You probably have seen this in stores. We've got it at shop.quiltaddictsonest.com. Comes in a couple of different colors. We have three that I find very useful. So there is the ultimate pounce part powder. This is white and it irons off, which is great because then you don't have to worry about getting all your lines off. They just go away and they stay away. Then we also have pink and blue and we stock these because you want to be able to see your chalk obviously because otherwise you don't know where to quilt and you want to have colors that will contrast with whatever is going on in your fabric. So for example, once I was doing a baby quilt that had blue, um, white and green and so I marked that with the pink chalk because that was going to contrast with everything whereas the white would have not shown up on the white and the blue would have not shown up on the blue. So sometimes you may need a couple of different colors to mark one quilt, but you'll kind of get used to that. If you want to start with one, just start with the ultimate pounce powder. It's like a tongue twister. Ultimate pounce powder, because that's the iron off stuff. And then you can just get a bunch of dark uh, sandwiches to test out with and practice with and then you can sort of get the others as you need them depending on what fabric you used in your quilt top. Now one quick note about these, the colored chalk is not, uh, you can't iron that off. You either need to brush it away with like your machiner's quilting gloves or a lint roller that's like cloth or you can wash it and it'll go away. If you put your iron on it, it will heat set it and then you're gonna cry. You can get it off, it's possible, but not ideal. So do not iron any of the color chalk. So I'm going to show you the two that we use in classes at Quilt Addicts Anonymous in Rock Island. We're going to do an all over stipple meander and an all over leaf meander. And I choose these two stencils in class because you're learning curves and you're learning points and pretty much every single free motion quilting design either has curves, points, or some combination of the two. So once you can kind of get that muscle memory down, then you can work from that. The idea is that you don't have to use these forever. You use them until you are confident enough to give it a try on your own and you have that muscle memory ingrained in your body and you're able to more um, accurately execute what you have in your mind's eye. So let's get started. So I'm gonna start with this large meander. There also is a small meander with it, but that's more for like micro stippling. I know micro stippling is really technically smaller than this, but we're gonna start with the big one. And so don't worry. Now, if yours ever gets wrinkled like this, this material is basically the same thing that a t-shirt screen printing is made out of. So you could iron it. And we actually just used these last night in class. So it gave me the idea to do the video so all of you could see it. And so you can see that the white powder that we used is actually going away. This looks more green now than it did beforehand. These things are fully reversible as well. So you can use both sides of the template. So that's really cool. I have just layered a couple of fat quarters with some leftover batting. And for this, when you're working on your home sewing machine, I recommend that you use cotton or 80-20 batting because it's gonna stick to your cotton fabric. And then you don't have to go through like spray basting or pinning or anything 
when you're just working with something this small, it'll all stick together and it's just a practice sample anyway. So it's totally fine. You don't have to worry about it. All right, so I'm gonna open up my pounds pad, which is not as clean as the other ones because I use mine often. So mine is quite dusty right now. So when you get it, it comes with a bag of chalk powder and um, you can get refills of this if you need it, but you always want to have one um, pounce pad per color. So like if I wanted to put blue in here later, I wouldn't want to do that. You would want to get a separate pounce for that. So this guy pops off, it's like a bank from when you were a kid. And what you want to do is fill this for when you do it for the first time all the way up to the top. Try not to get it everywhere. That's always the challenge. And when people have trouble with these, when they say it's not working, they usually didn't prime it correctly. So what you want to do is just make sure that you take this step very seriously. So once I have that filled all the way to the top, I'm going to push this in. And this is the important part with the plastic part still on the bottom. You want to bang this 50 times against a hard surface like your sewing table. So pretend your significant other just did that one thing that irks you all the time. Take out some aggression. Or your close relative just posted something political on Facebook. Or you went to the store with a toddler and let them go through with one of the little mini carts. Those mini carts are to encourage liquor sales for the adults, I'm convinced. Just kidding, I love my toddler, but don't let them push the cart. You'll be there like 10 times as long as you need to. So once you have banged that again enough times, you're going to pop your top off, fill it all the way up to the top again, and then bang it 50 more times when you're filling it for the first time. And you should have a nice white coating all over this. If it isn't, or if it's another color, it should be blue or pink. And if it isn't coated very well, then that means that the powder has not gone through to the pad to swipe off. So step number one, you gotta do that. And when you're like running out, so you're working on this a lot, you, if you're ever having trouble getting it to swipe through, it's time to do that again. I've got this lined up. You can see where the start is here and where the end is here. I'm gonna show you how to flip that over to restart it. I'm just kind of starting in the middle here um, because this is just a little sample piece. So what you wanna do is you're gonna take your pounce pad out and holding one end really still because if this shifts on you, then it is, you're gonna get like double vision on your line. So you wanna make sure you kind of hold it nice and still. I'm gonna swoop it off. Now it's called the pounce pad, so you may be tempted to like do this on it. That's just gonna get chalk everywhere, like, you know, grade school eraser memories. What you wanna do is just swipe it across the top, like that. Now, before you go ripping this whole thing out of the way, what you wanna kinda pull up your sides and make sure that it has transferred really well. Like I could go over that bit a little more if I wanted to. Um, I'm definitely gonna go over this edge a little bit more. Um, I can see it, but I want you guys to be able to see it really well on camera. So we're gonna do that. All right, so you can see I got a little bit of the little bit in there. So I'm just gonna rub that off with my finger. We could iron it off too, um, but I want to real quickly just flip this over. And if it's hot, then it, the chalk won't transfer. Okay, so now, since our start was over here and our end is over here, what I need to do is flip this over because this is fully reversible. And some of the templates will have registration marks on them so you can line them up real easy. But what I wanna do is kind of put my fingernail where that tip is and guide it in to where that line ended up and then kind of straighten it out so that I have a nice straight line. Obviously that's easier if you have like straight blocks to kind of line it up with as well. So now holding it again, I'm gonna swipe again, going down the rest of the way. It's looking pretty good. All right, so within just a couple of minutes, I was able to swipe half of this fat quarter and get chalk on it, and now I'm gonna be ready to go. 
Now, here's one note about this. This chalk is meant to come off eventually. So what that means is you want to handle this carefully and you wouldn't want to like mark your entire quilt top all at once. You would want to mark like one panel from, you know, top to bottom if you're doing like starting in the middle. And that way it will stay in place for that one section you're doing and then you can move it because a lot of times you might find that the chalk is gone by the time you're done sewing it and that's good that's what we want it to do we want it to stay on long enough to see it to quilt it and then go away so whenever i'm quilting i always use my machiner's quilting gloves they've got little grippies on the fingertips that help me move the fabric around really easily which is really important with this because one it's going to have less wrist and shoulder strain and two you're not gonna be like grabbing the fabric as much because you want to make sure that you just have a real light hand with this so that the chalk stays in place. So for this next step, you're only gonna quilt whatever fits in between your hands. So whenever it gets uncomfortable, it's time to stop with your needle down and move your, reposition your hands somewhere else and then continue going. You don't wanna try to quilt beyond your comfort zone because then it's going to get messy and not look very good. So at home, you would want to use contrasting thread when you get started. That way you can really see what, where you've been and where you're going. Once you get to do this on a real quilt, you wanna use thread that's gonna hide and blend in. Right now I'm using white and I always use RFL 50 weight when I'm quilting on my home sewing machine. All right, so I'm gonna start where I first marked and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put my needle down and bring it back up. And then I'm gonna lift that presser foot up and I have a free motion quilting foot on right now. That's also called the darning foot sometimes. Is I'm gonna pull that bobbin thread up. That will keep it from getting messy on the bottom and having thread nest issues, which you don't want. So when you first get started, you just wanna secure your threads by stitching in place a couple of times. And that'll keep that nice and strong and you won't have to worry about your edges coming out. Now I have the fabric sitting in my lap it is not scraping against my body in any way. One time we had someone come in who had been using these, they couldn't figure out why the, fat, the chalk wasn't staying on. So she tried it in class and she had blue chalk all over her boobs. She was a, a large chested woman and it, it was just scraping off as she was bringing her quilt up. So what we ended up having her do was she started with her quilt back here and then quilted forward and that worked really well for her. I feel like I can see better when it's in my lap. So do what works best for you and just kind of see what works. The other thing I want to do is I want to drop my feed dogs. If your machine will not drop the feed dogs, what you can do is you can decrease your stitch length as low as it will go to zero. And I want my needle in that center position. All right, so I'm going to place my hands like this and I'm going to just start stitching. Now you control your stitch length and your stitch speed. So sometimes when I'm doing this, I will slow my machine down to the medium setting because then I can't like go pedal to the metal because I don't wanna go super fast on this. I wanna have nice even stitches and because there is no stitch regulator, you are your own stitch regulator. So if you're listening, you can hear that the machine sounds really steady. I'm holding the presser foot in about the same spot and I'm moving it at about the same rate. So if I wanted to make it faster, I could speed up my machine. And then I could also need to speed up the rate that I'm moving things around. Otherwise, my stitches are gonna be very uneven. So you have to find what works best for you to where you feel like you have the most control. Um, so if that means lowering your speed so that you can go nice and slow and take those curves, that's fine. The other thing to keep in mind is it does not matter if you are not perfectly on the curve that's marked because that line is gonna go away. No one's gonna know that I was a little bit off. What I did was I followed the line and the curve. And what is important is that you have a nice curve at the end and not, you know, like a weird divot or something. You just wanna work on smooth curves and following as best you can on those lines.
All right, so this is what it looks like all quilted out. And my stitches are pretty evenly spaced and they're a good distance apart. You don't want it to be super tiny to where if you had to rip them out, it would just drive you crazy or so large that it's not really gonna hold together over time. And you just wanna kind of follow those lines. And I would love to tell you that in places like this where I was off of the line that I did that on purpose, I could show you how this goes away, but that would be a lie. Um, you just wanna kind of follow the idea of the curve and be as close to it as you can to develop that muscle memory. Because at the end of the day, this is all going to go away. Uh, the chalk lines and your goal is going to be to be able to do this without the chalk over time once you start to develop that. It's like this curve is like nowhere near where the line is, but the curve looks nice. It's it's just a nice even curve. The stitches are nice and even as it goes. And that's what you're aiming for. And there are spots where it's not super perfect, like up here, there's this nice little divot where you can tell I stopped and that I didn't get a real good start again. And, but that's okay because if I were doing this with black or dark gray thread, you would never notice that. You would just see texture. And I'm just using white thread one so you guys can see it at home. And you guys should use a two um, really contrasting thread. That way you can really see where you're going and where you've been and until you kind of get the hang of it. So now I'm gonna show you how this just goes away magically with the iron. And again, this only works with the ultimate white pounce powder because the other ones will heat set the color and the pigment in it and you do not want that. So those you have to brush off or just throw your quilt in the wash when it's all done. All right, so I've got my Elisa. You can already see it getting a lot darker because that extra powder that kind of got everywhere as I went is going away. And the spots where the seams were, where you stitched over, you kind of have to spend a little bit of extra time on those because, you know, it's gotten pushed down a little bit. So it takes a minute for that heat to get to all the chalk. But look at the finished remove side versus before, and it is all totally gone. It's really awesome. And this is like black as black can be fabric. So you know that if it's going to come off of this, it's going to come off of, of anything really. So that's really nice it's a great feature of the ultimate white so if you do a lot of um, dark quilts it's a great one to use the others do come off just as easy I sometimes i'll just swipe them with my um, machiner's quilting gloves still on and that takes it off or you can use one of the old-fashioned um, lint brushes so on this one the repeat is in the same spot on the same side so i don't have to flip anything over some of them are more complicated than that when it comes to finding where your repeat is their registration marks and if you guys like this video give it a thumbs up and we'll do more of them with more complicated stencils but for right now this is a really great way to start because you can practice those curves and the points all right so i'm going to go ahead and swipe over this making sure to hold my stencil in place so I don't end up with that double vision if something shifts a little bit on me. I'll pull it up and see, and see that all right. I think it's probably time to bang it again, so we'll do that. It's like chalkboard eraser, I swear. Oh no, it came off. It's okay, it'll be fine, I can see it well enough. All right, so now I'm going to bring it and line it up again. Try not to go over my stuff from earlier. See how that did? Pretty good. All right, so don't bang your bounce pad on top of your template because it will just bang the chalk right off. But I can see that well enough and it's showing up really well on camera. So we're just gonna leave it. You could, if that happened, like try to line it back up and that will be easier with some fabrics and chalk than others. For this one, I'm just gonna let it be and we'll get through it. It'll be fine. All right, so just like before, I mean, really careful not to wipe off all the chalk on me because then I'm not gonna be able to pull it on myself. That's not gonna work very well. So I'm gonna start by bringing my thread down, back up again to get my bobbin thread up, and then put it back down the same spot. And I am positioning my hands 
So that way I have a nice space to work with here. Let's sew in place a couple of times. And what I wanna do is I wanna stitch out the point. And when you're first getting started, like come to a full stop at that point. Because what you wanna do is have nice sharp points rather than curves or loopies at the point. So coming to a full stop, then I'm gonna get going to my rhythm again. And I'm just gonna focus on getting to my next point. a full stop so now I can see my line is going to curve around and come up here so now I'm going to reposition my hand so that way that is in the center and we're going to start stitching and don't feel like you need to go this fast if you need to do slow and steady that's perfectly fine okay so from now on I'm going to just kind of pause and do a couple stitches at the points rather than stop every single time. And that will kind of, you'll get to that point over time. But until you feel comfortable, go ahead and come to a full stop at each point. here because I want to reposition my hands because I don't have good control at the edges like this. So I want to make sure that I have my hands as close as possible so I can move it over. And this is so much easier to do with those machiners on because those fingertips really just grip everything and make it very easy for me to just kind of move this around on my should have stopped there. I've got a weird kind of the leaf thing because I didn't stop when I should have to adjust my hands. So just like before, I would love to tell you that when I got way off on these lines that I did that on purpose, that would be a lie. Um, leaves are not perfect in nature, so yours don't have to be either. The idea is that it looks like a leaf, that we've got a nice swoop and a point, and then it moves on to the next one. So what I would do is I would just order a couple of stencils. These are great ones to have. We're gonna put a link to them in the description box down below, and you can practice those curves and practice those points. And when you start to feel comfortable doing it, then go ahead and give it a try without the stencils and see how good that muscle memory has developed because that's the goal, is that you don't forever have to mark your stencil with a basic meander, which is what these are. It's to get that muscle memory down, get that confidence down, kind of get used to working around the quilt and not backing yourself into a corner. And you can always draw and stencil you know, on a sketch pad too, to kind of get an idea of how to work around your quilt better. Um, those are all great and awesome tips. So give those things a try. Um, if you have two sewing machines, set one up with your darning foot or your free motion foot and just stack, set up a stack of these and once a day, quilt a fat quarter. Um, and then you will get better at it. Even if you do it like two or three times a week, that's going to be better than, you know, doing it a whole bunch on one day and then leaving it sit for a week because that repetitive um, motion is what gets you better at doing this because your body starts to remember how to move and then you're better able to execute what you see in your mind's eye. And if you're terrible at it when you start, that's okay. It just means you need to practice some more. You're not going to be awesome when you get started. That's okay. We do this as our last class in our intermediate quilting and we don't even do it on the quilt because I'm like, 
look guys, it's not gonna be good when you start for the first time and that's okay. You're gonna practice until you feel confident enough to do it on your quilt and then you're gonna go and you're gonna break out your, your big quilt that you wanna give this a try on on your home sewing machine or on your long arm. Thanks so much for following along with this video tutorial. If you enjoyed it, please subscribe and hit the bell notification so you see all our future videos on quilting tips and tricks. If you do this and you give it a try, I would love to see how it turns out. Just uh, do the hashtag Quilt Addicts Anonymous on Instagram and I'll see it and I might share it. Uh, so check that out, that'd be awesome. We've got all the supplies you need to do this over at shop.quiltaddictsanonymous.com. Just click on the link in the description below and you can come check this out. And thanks so much and until next time, happy quilting.